it's a great pleasure to be here today, and I'm here on behalf of the J.R. McKenzie Trust, uh, as Ken has said, and I'm here with my colleague Eileen Kelly, uh, who uh, leads a lot of our programme work in the Trust and is probably even more familiar with this material than I am, as I'm newer to the Trust than, than Eileen is. Um, the J.R. McKenzie Trust is a family foundation, for those of you that don't know, that turns 80 this year. We're the oldest family foundation in New Zealand and we were created through an act of parliament. Our legacy comes from the sale of McKenzie's department stores. Some of you in this room are too young to remember those venerable places where some of our parents shopped all around New Zealand. Uh, and Sir Roy McKenzie and his father, Sir John McKenzie, were not afraid of pushing out on issues that were unpopular, and advocating for unpopular issues was always part of what the McKenzie Trust has done right from its early days, actually, and uh, the story is often told of Sir Roy being approached a long, long time ago by a group of women at a um, social event who wanted to start a refuge for women who were suffering from domestic violence. Now, back then, this was a really long time ago, domestic violence most likely wasn't spoken about in the best parts of town. But he was at this event, this woman approached him, he listened to them, he thought about it, and he told them to go and see Jenny Gill, who happened to work for him at that time, the next day. So our, our history has been around this. We are an intentional philanthropic funder of advocacy in New Zealand and have been for quite some time. Probably in our earlier days, this was more ad hoc. It was a less conscious funding of advocacy. And in 2010, we decided to fund advocacy that aligned with our vision at that time that remains the same today of a socially just and inclusive Aotearoa New Zealand. Since then, almost 20% of our annual funding has been for advocacy on a wide range of issues, including drug reform, criminal justice reform, which Tanya will speak about later. And it's wonderful to have my friend and colleague Emily Toe here from the Toe Foundation in New York, who's got extensive experience in this particular sector as well. Huge welcome to you, Emily, after a great tour of Australia as well. Um, we've also advocated and supported advocacy on the part in, in the area of child poverty, the living wage movement, which has really gained a head of steam in the last couple of years, which you may have, have noticed as well. And in earlier days, um, improving outcomes for children with correctable vision loss, and that was a whole project of the J.R. McKenzie Trust for quite some time, called See Here. In early 2019, we commissioned the Centre for Social Impact to strategically explore funding advocacy, and that was to inform our future funding of advocacy, but also our wider strategy development. So last year, the Trust spent the year reviewing our strategy. We published a number of pieces. Some of you will have seen this piece uh, here. Uh, I left a couple of copies on the back table. Uh, it's on our website. Um, it's a great resource, and in fact, it's been picked up in all sorts of places I discovered last year when I was with Philanthropy Australia in Canada. It's a great resource. Huge, huge thanks to Kat for her incredible writing and research on this, and the team at CSI who were also involved in the review of it. It's a really great resource. And of course, the resource we're mostly talking about today is this one. We actually don't have any more print copies of this. So these are the last couple from the office. Uh, but the, again, this is on our website as well. And Eileen, uh, helped uh, by um, some others, from the uh, sector, ran a great session at the conference, the PNZ conference last year around this. So this is, the larger publication is about our work in advocacy. The smaller publication was more generalisable material that might be of use to more of you. Um, this is probably a bit more internally focused, but still got some useful stuff in it. So in that publication, um, Rachel, who worked on it, did an amazing amazing job on it as well, Rachel. She explored what advocacy is, what advocacy funding involves, and what our experience since 2010, and the strategic implications for us. To gain the voice of experience from funded advocates, Rachel spoke with 
a range of advocates nationally from organisations like Action Station, the Drug Foundation, Just Speak, the Office of the Children's Commissioner, uh, and other inspiring funders here and overseas. The Grace Memorial Trust, um, the Reichstein Foundation, Trust for London, and Emily from the Toe Foundation as well was interviewed as part of this publication, uh, as well as the J.R. McKenzie staff and uh, some of the trustees. So these are the two reports that were created. A rich picture of the power and potential of advocacy was uh, created. We think it can be a major tool for change, whether it relates to a single issue or policy that's involved in wider systems change. And a number of you are here today with a, an interest in systems change, and you'll be familiar with a separate project of the J.R. McKenzie Trust, uh, the Peter McKenzie Project, which is looking at systems change within the area of child and whānau well-being, particularly focused around children and created with a legacy from the late Peter McKenzie, Sir Roy's son. We see advocacy efforts play out in so many overt and subtle ways in society, but few understand what's really gone on, what's gone into achieving change through advocacy. We've learnt that advocacy is incredibly challenging work, it requires savvy, skilled and strategic operators and it's an area that is poorly understood by many in the philanthropic world and I think is sometimes seen as quite a, quite a scary thing. Um, advocacy for what? And I suppose I always think about it as advocacy in support of mission. And it, it's when mission aligns with our mission and our vision of a socially just and inclusive Aotearoa New Zealand in terms of where the J.R. McKenzie Trust is now, is, with, is, is now at with advocacy, we've recently undertaken the strategic review, as I said. Um, there were significant outcomes um, from the advocacy that we've supported over the years, and as a result of that, it has been included as a specific, um, a specific principle of practice in our strategy, in our strategic framework going forward. So it will be part of our DNA, as it has been in the past, uh, going forward. Any of you that have read Sir Roy McKenzie's book, Footprints, which is a, a long and interesting, um, interesting book of Sir Roy's life, um, will have seen, and you may have heard him say, one of his favourite quotes in life that pertains to this, is, do not go where the path may lead, go instead and leave a trail. And we take that mantra with us in our work every day, as I'm sure all of you do here as well. So on that note, I will hand over to our next speaker. And thank you all for being here today. I think it's going to be a great day.